When will God spew out the false Christians? Hmm. Turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 3, King James Bible. Revelation chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou art cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Yeah. God is going to spew people, a church, actually, out of his mouth. And, you know, oh well, doctrinally, it's his, you know, his first century or, you know, whatever. You can fight back and forth on that whole thing. It's first century or this is a church that's in the time of Jacob's trouble in the end times or whatever. Whatever. Instruction in righteousness, though. Um... All through the Pauline epistles, the Bible is teaching that in the end times, they're not going to endure sound doctrine. There's going to be perilous times coming. People are going to deny the faith and whatever else. There is a falling away in the end times, and we are seeing it right now. Um, the people that are calling themselves Christians are doing things today that nobody would have thought of doing or even saying or even thinking, you know, one, even 100 years ago, 50 years ago. It's just absolutely insane. But... I want to make a couple points as I'm going through this. Uh, we're seeing this thing of false Christians. You know, we go through these dividing lines, like I've said about in other studies, other videos. We go through these dividing lines, and all of a sudden you see certain people that you thought that they were real, you thought they were genuine, you know, and all of a sudden they're going out from us, proving that they were not of us. For if they would have been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. All right? First John chapter 2 talks about that. And you know, what, what we're seeing is we're seeing this thing happening with more frequency. And all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, I thought brother so-and-so, and I thought sister so -and, -so. and now they've gone off in that direction and whatever else. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that thing in my years of being in ministry. And what's really going on there? Um, Got to be a little bit graphic here, sorry, but... Uh, uh, I'm sure most of you out there have spewed at some point in time in your life. Vomited would be another way to say it. And, uh, you know, usually, unless it's a really violent allergic reaction that you really don't have time to prepare for, usually it takes a little bit of time. And all of a sudden you'll get that kind of the stomach acid coming up into, the, into your you know, back part of your throat and you kind of, kind of swallow it. And, oh, boy. And you start to get the the, the kind of pain in the stomach there and, and you start to oh and then you start the gag reflex starts you know, whoop, whoop, like that and it gets more and more painful as time goes by and when you spew finally vomit out whatever that your body's disagreeing with <laughs> get a hold of that one that your body's disagreeing with whatever when you finally get rid of it out of your mouth it's uh it's painful and um I think that that's what's why the Lord used this, you know, figure of speech or not figure of speech, but this this figure here to present what he's the way he's feeling about people nowadays. And um, I can tell you, you know, I mean, I'm sure all of you have experienced this, where you're watching some false prophet and you just you almost feel like throwing up. It almost it just makes you sick to your stomach to hear what they're saying, and you think. How could you say a thing like that? How could you make fun of people calling out to the Lord like Robert Breaker does? Or how could you how could you say that Jesus Christ is a created being or you know and and, and all these things and you just go, oh, oh, it just makes me oh it just upsets you so bad in your stomach, you feel it. I think as time goes by, we're gonna have more of those retching type of moments where you're going to feel that oh, oh. I mean, think about this. As a Christian, you are one flesh with Jesus Christ. Again, you're going to feel the sorrow. I've talked about that in other studies. There's times you're just going to feel all of a sudden it's this real sorrow, just kind of a down day. I just, why am I feeling this way? But you're also going to feel those times of feeling just sick to your stomach and just, oh, oh, oh you know, just like you want to vomit. Hmm. But thankfully, the Bible identifies who these people are. They're neither cold nor hot. They, want to, they don't want to take strong stands on sin. 
Verse 17, Because thou sayest, this wicked church, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Yeah. You see these people out there that profess to be Christians and they don't have any kind of financial trouble? They aren't going through any kind of hard times? Everything's provided for them? Mm -hmm. Some of my enemies uh, uh, are making a lot of money. A lot of them are. Okay? I'm not going to get into a whole lot of stuff there, but a lot of these guys, they're living in all kinds of nice places and whatever else. Then they have the audacity to attack me and things and question my spending of money and whatever else. It's disgusting. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Yeah. See, the people out, out there, especially in America right now, the wealth of America is almost entirely debt-based. Very few people live debt-free. And I understand. Again, I understand. I'm not ripping on you if you have a mortgage or whatever. I understand how hard it is out there if you're you know, paying mortgage or paying rent or whatever. I understand. I understand that. It's very difficult to live debt-free. Uh, you have to live very poor sometimes. Um, you know, for those who don't know the, the whole story about us, uh, we bought property. We bought some land because it's a whole lot cheaper than going out and buying a house. And uh, this place where we're living doesn't even have running water right now. And um, there's a lot of other things that we don't have. And uh, it is what it is. God provides. God, you know, keeps food on the table and keeps clothes on our back and and whatever, having food and raiment, let us be there with content, and I am content. Um, but I get really irritated when I have people that have, that are in this whole debt-based culture thinking that they can just judge us and be harsh on us and whatever else. It's just... <laughs> I could say a whole lot more on that, but I'm just going to let that go for now. But uh, the whole point is, these people think that they're rich, when in reality, their wealth is debt-based. And the economy is eventually going to fall apart. And you're going to be given the choice, they will be given the choice, I'll say, because I think, I'm not sure of the timing of it, whatever, but the choice is going to come eventually, after the catching up, I'll say it that way, the choice is going to come, you lose everything financially, or you get yoked up to the mark of the beast system, worshiping the beast in his image, you do that, and your wealth is actually going to improve. I do believe that they're going to give money Different people have theorized that, that, you know, they'll say, if we destroy the financial system, we bring in digital currency, well, we can inflate things, whatever we want. Um, I think that that's going to be there. They'll give financial incentive to people that do take the mark and worship the beast in his image. I believe that way. But uh, a lot of these people that, that just have the, the debts and everything else right now, they think that they're rich. And all that stuff can be wiped out just like that. You study the financial collapses of Russia and Argentina and things. People are very, very wealthy, and all of a sudden, boom, everything just falls apart. That could easily happen in America before we go home to be with the Lord. Easily. I don't know. Mark of the Beast isn't going to come in. Certainly not. But a financial collapse? Yeah, that could happen. And all of a sudden, you're going to find out what the wealth of this country really is. And it's not a mortgaged house or a car payments or whatever else. That stuff can be taken from you. But let's continue. Um, verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. God's righteousness, in other words. Okay? God's righteousness is gold there that shows up at the judgment seat of Christ. When you show His righteousness, okay, when you are fighting against sin as a, a saved Christian, the life of sanctification, whatever else, and you are living not your own self-righteousness that's Rejecting Jesus Christ's righteousness. I'm talking about God's righteousness. God tells you what to do and you do it. Kind of a thing. All right. Silver is the word of God. Precious stones. Um, you know, is, is uh, people that are getting saved and things. Um, again, I'm not going to go off on the whole thing. You can listen to my Judgment Seat of Christ study on if you want more on that. Um, uh I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. Again, white raiment's another type of righteousness. You can see that in Revelation 19. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Do you really see what's going on in this world? 
Yeah. Light of the body is the eye. Okay, interesting. Verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Zealous? Hmm? You should be very, very active in fighting against sin and trying to clean your life up. You should be zealous. And uh, you say, well, doesn't have to, you know, what about witnessing people? Well, that comes as a result of you cleaning your life up. All right. Let's continue. Verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Very interesting there because if you jump down to chapter 4, verse 1, After this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Very interesting. Jesus is standing at the door and knocking. And pretty soon he opens that door. Yeah, and when that door opens and he says, come up hither, and we go up, that door is going to go shut. And then if you've been, if you didn't get saved, if you weren't truly born again, right now in this time, that door opens and shuts in your face. Now you have a new dispensation that you're going to be there, faith and works. That's going to be horrible in that time, having to live through that time when you can't take the mark and whatever else. But here's another little verse of encouragement. Verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Yeah, churches are people, by the way, too. Um, not buildings. I could do a whole lot of talking on that, but I've done other videos, so you can look at that stuff. But if you overcome this time with all these fake people, these wishy-washy people and the easy believism crowd and lordship salvation crowd and all these different heretics that are out there, if you overcome it and just say, no, I'm not part of that, no, I'm not part of that, um, I don't want to be lukewarm, I want to be zealous. And when I mess up, I'm going to repent. I want to move forward with my life. If you can overcome, don't uh, you know, be weary and well-doing for a new season we shall reap if we faint not. Yeah, Galatians chapter 6 talks about that. Um, if you can overcome this time, uh, you're going to have a great honor when you get up there to be with the Lord. It's rough right now. I mean, it's there's always been issues. There's always been trouble and whatever else throughout church history. But boy, today, oh, my word, it's bad. It's real bad. So just wanted to do a little message there of encouragement. Um, stay strong, Okay. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Uh, don't back down on what you've been assured of, right? Um, but the second part of this whole thing is, uh, when you feel that sickness, um, when you see some of these heretics that are out there and just these vessels of wrath, like I talked about in the other study, and they just... Oh, I can't believe that they just said that. Oh, my word. You just, what? They just preached that? I cannot believe that they actually just said that. Oh, you're feeling what God is feeling. It isn't just the thing of the down days when you just have this really kind of depressed, just, what is wrong? I don't understand what's going on. Those are times that the Lord is grieved while looking at man, and you're feeling it because you're part of his body. Uh, that's, a, that's a thought you ought to just let that kind of sink in there for a little bit of time. The creator of the universe and you're part of his body. One flesh with him. Hmm. Um, and then there's other times that you just, oh, oh, I cannot believe that that person just said that. Calls themselves a, a Christian and they just said that or did that or, oh, oh. Hmm. And when the Lord finally says, okay, Time's up. You know, I think I think a lot of these people, honestly, uh, you know, the the reason we're still here, that the catching up hasn't happened yet, is because I think a lot of people are just still kind of just lagging, just kind of taking their time, whether or not I should get saved and whatever. And God is long suffering; He's trying to be patient, but eventually He just says, "Okay, you had your chances." I mean, people, and out they come. See, they have the appearance right now of being in the body, but they're just foreign matter. And a lot of these people, uh, again, I have seen this thing for years and years and years. They just dabble with salvation. 
they just say, well, you know, brother, I was listening to you for a while, but then I started listening to this guy and that guy. And, and, and you know, I have some questions now. And, and then I'll see them and then they come back and they say, well, yeah, you did a video exposing them. And I kind of think that you're right, but I still have a few questions. And I think, I'm, you know, and, it just, and they just dabble with all this different stuff. Um, they're neither cold nor hot, you see. They don't want to make up their mind. The old hymn says, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. You better get the things, you know, sorted out. Okay? Uh, I think there's a lot of people that just haven't come to the end of themselves yet. And like I said, one of my videos outdoors, uh, God cannot save a self-righteous man or woman. That's the one sin you have to give up in order to be saved. He won't save you if you have your own self-righteousness. And you see, a lot of those people... What's the point of being neither cold nor hot? You're self-righteous. Yeah. You better give it up. And you better do it soon. Because the Lord is, uh, He's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And uh, that time is going to come when the Lord's just going to say, okay, you've made me sick. You've been able to sit under preaching and teaching of the Word of God that doesn't compromise there's others out there besides this ministry. Others, and some of you people out there, you watch and you listen and you watch and you listen and you go, yeah, well, I don't know. I just have to get to my work here. And I I guess I'm still going to go to church this week. And I don't know. There's some things that I disagree with. But uh, you better get on fire quickly. Why? The Lord is uh, knocking at the door. He's knocking. You can hear the knocking. You can say, you know, the news, the, the, the wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence. Look at all the stuff that's happening. The Lord's saying, you better wake up. You better wake up. You better wake up. Be zealous therefore and repent. Come on. Time's almost up. I'm going to open the door soon. You can be ready. Or are you still going to be just floundering with your neither hot, hold, cold nor hot? I can get it out. Are you going to still just be messing around? Just playing Christian? <laughs> you better make your decision. Because that day is going to come along. And if you're not saved, if you're not born again, God hasn't saved you, I'll say it that way, um, you're going to get spewed out of His mouth. And you're going to be here for the worst time period that this world has ever seen. And salvation in that time period means you're going to lose your life. You're going to be hunted down and publicly executed by the severing of the head. Man. Uh, you better get uh, very hot for the Lord very quickly. Um, make your decision to be very, very zealous for the Lord. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.